Murphy. Well, uh, and despite the initial confusion over the, the organisation of our time this evening, I, I do think it was confusion. I don't think it was anything sinister on the part of the executive. I very much enjoyed the opportunity to hear everyone's contributions by being in the chamber. And it's, a, it's a genuine privilege to be on the committee. And Kieran Cole, if I may, just congratulate you on your, on your election, um, because I haven't had the chance to do that yet. But when the last all um, changed the standing order so that we could elect our Kieran Cole by secret ballot, that represented a fundamental change in, in how this place does its business. But I did find it difficult at the time to explain to people why it was so significant and why it was so fundamental and why it meant that the, the door would now be in a better position to hold the government of the day to account and why the door would be able to be more independent. And I found myself leaning back and, on, on the example that happened in the, in, in the Westminster Parliament and the tradition there when in 2007 they changed their, their way of business to elect a Ken Corla by secret ballot or, their, or their, their, their chairman, their Speaker of the House. That came into effect in 2009 and, and immediately following that you saw the flow of powers from... Um, from the government to the Speaker and so to the people. And that's actually what we're seeing right now in the creation of this Reform Committee. Um, the power is entrusted to it. And again, I say it's a privilege to be on that committee and to, have, you know, to get to work with everyone in this House who's making such a positive contributions and to those people who gave contributions from outside that committee and as well to the staff who are working so well on it. But, you know, I think people have to realise now that what we're seeing here is that the power to reform how we do our business is no longer in the hands of the government. No one party or group can now force its will on how this place should do its business on the rest of us. And that's a real fundamental change in how we do our business, and it's incredibly significant, can't call it. Um, the power to, to reform our parliament, the responsibility to do that, rests with you and with the committee, and we've never seen that before. And it, it's, it's exciting, and, and it's a real opportunity. And it mustn't stop with this initial phase that you've planned out. It must continue through the lifetime of this doll and into the next. And it's also very important, though there's some people outside of this chamber, and indeed some people inside this chamber, don't think it is that important. But how this place works or doesn't work impacts the lives of, of, of people in this country every day. And what we do is important. But if we're not doing it properly, we begin to undermine ourselves. We also then undermine politics and the practice of politics in this country. But worse than that, we can actually undermine the fabric of society and we can do a lot of damage to people's lives. And I don't think that's to overstate things because there's a very real thread between what we do in here and what happens in Irish life. And you know, that thread should be as strong as a rope, but sometimes I feel it's as weak as strength, particularly when we come to very significant issues that we've debated in this chamber in the last five years. And the way we've debated it, or the, the results that have come from that, and then how the people have reacted and responded to that in the negative way they have, and the damage it's done then, not just to the body politic, but also to the country. You know, eight years after the financial collapse, and we are still, as a group of elected representatives, in that position of responsibility to rebuild the faith of people in their political system and also their politicians. That's why we have to reform this place and that's why it's so important to make our parliament more diverse, to make it more representative, to make it more accountable, more open, more responsible and more responsive to the needs of Irish people. And, you know, in looking with others to, to set up this committee to, to do this work, um, in Fine Gael, we put together an Iraq's reform programme. And what we sought to do in that document was to put forward certain ideas. We weren't claiming originality over those so that we'd invented them, but to put forward ideas in good faith to say, look, regardless of when a government is formed or who is in government, we'll sign up to these measures because we see them as being important. I think that's important as well. And in tandem with that, we agreed that we would, ourselves as a party, um, seek to relax the, the, the whip system, both in, in, in the chamber here itself, but also in committees. And I think that's very important. Because I think we all have to come to this with good faith. And to an extent, we all have to come to it with a, a Rawlsian veil of ignorance. That the changes that we make here as a reform committee will empower TDs and empower the Oireachtas, but will also recognise the constitutional responsibilities and obligations that are there for government. And we all have to be responsible in making changes because ultimately we do not know what seat we may occupy or what bench we might sit in in this House following the changes that we make. And that's going to require a change in attitude and a change in mindset as well. Glencora, the work of, of the committee is, is underway, and as I've said before, it's a privilege to sit on it with my colleagues from around the House, and you set a very ambitious time frame. And the proposals in the interim report are very welcome. Uh, you know, again, the establishment of a business management committee is another fundamental reform to how we do our business. We as parliamentarians here in the Dáil will decide how we do our business on a weekly, monthly, and sessional basis. I think that's very important. And if we have the will ourselves, we'll be able to avoid the use of the guillotine, but it will fall to us to do that. And that's important. And, you know, if we can approach then the business committee in the way we've approached the reform committee, seeking consensus, trying to be more mature in our work and less confrontational 
if we can do that in how we organize our work, hopefully that attitude and that, that culture and that belief will, will, will translate into the work that we actually do and the, the modus operandi as we approach each of the issues that will face us over the next months and years. I think it's important, just as I conclude, to recognize more groups. To, you know, standing on a party platform is important, but also at the same time, as we do our work in here, we must recognize the voices others have. And just to conclude, Kian Kora, I look forward to the further work that continues over the next weeks and months and hopefully throughout the lifetime of this dual session. Thank you. Murphy.